months we will be in 2019 so time flies doesn't it uh, it's today is the uh, 9th of uh, October 2018 and um, we are going to uh, have a look at what is going to happen uh, according to the transits of the major planets around the zodiac for 2019. Uh, this is the chart, this is the uh, zodiac beginning with Aries then going on to Taurus, Gemini, Cancer, Leo, Virgo, Libra, Scorpio, Sagittarius, Capricorn, Aquarius and Pisces. In Pisces we have Neptune at the moment. Well Neptune has been in Pisces, in Pisces sorry, since um, since 2012, since February 2012. This transit is very slow. That planet is very far from the Sun. So it takes about 165 years to travel around the uh, zodiac. Its uh, transit in Pisces is very important because Pisces is Neptune's sign. It is the ruler of that sign, as we say in astrology. So it will affect uh, people born under that sign, of course, but it will also affect everyone because we all have something in Pisces. It may be a planet, it may be something else. It could be a node, a lunar node, maybe uh, uh, Lilith or something else, or a house. We all have one astrological house in Pisces or included in a house. That sign can be included in a house. Uh, a house can start late uh, in um, Aquarius and end in Aries. Therefore Pisces will belong to that house. So because Neptune represents the ability to connect with the astral um, environment, with the invisible world, uh, it represents intuition, feelings that we can't explain, but they're there inside of us. Um, we tend to connect with uh, the spiritual level of life as well uh, at times. And during the transit of Neptune, anything to do with religion, uh, beliefs, uh, spiritual life, philosophy will be enhanced. We will need more um, answers about the great questions that we ask ourselves about life, about what's going on after we die. Uh, do we uh, reincarnate or not? Uh, all those questions of course are subject to a lot of um, various answers that tend to contradict themselves actually. But Neptune in that sign is very interesting this year because we can rely on our intuition, on our good feelings, on that connection that we have with the spiritual, with our spiritual self um, to move forward and perhaps uh, progress 
in life. And that progress can be made in a very concrete manner because we have uh, another planet that is um, uh, helping or supporting the influence of uh, Neptune and that planet is Saturn. Now Saturn is in Capricorn. It's been in Capricorn since uh, the 21st of December 21st of December uh, 2017 so it's been in Capricorn for uh, over a year or almost a year now it will be in Capricorn um, for another uh, another year um, another another couple of years almost because it will uh, transit in Capricorn until the end of 2020 although it's going to go into uh, Aquarius but retrograde into Capricorn again in 2020. So until that time Saturn and Neptune will form what we call a sextile which is an angle of about um, 60 degrees. It's actually an angle that separates two signs that are compatible. Compatible um, according to the elements. The element of Capricorn is Earth. The element of Pisces is water. So water and Earth mix together quite easily and are used actually. This, this mix may be used to, to build houses. Um, or something else. So there is something constructive between uh, that, that may be going on between those two signs therefore between the planets that are in the signs. Now Neptune represents our dreams, the ideal life that we uh, uh, dream of and Saturn represents reality objectivity um, and the more we uh, work on our dreams to realize our dream concretely the more chance we have to actually succeed of course so it's not enough to have dreams although we do, we all dream and we dream during our sleeps um, during our sleep for about maybe four or five times a night. Uh, dreams are essential to life and because they're essential we keep on dreaming even when we are awake but that dream when we are awake is a bit different. It is more a hope that we can get something that is unreachable um, but that we want to reach eventually. So Saturn representing reality represents also the ability that we have to work, to work hard, to work in a sustained manner until we reach our goals and that's the purpose of the uh, effort that we may be able to put into what we want to uh, reach and attain uh, or acquire. Uh, during that uh, transit of Saturn in, uh, re in good relationship with uh, Neptune. There will be another uh, very important meeting which I call a karmic meeting. That's when Saturn will enter um, into Pisces and that will happen in 2023. We're not there yet but it will come soon enough. When it does Neptune will still be in Pisces because Neptune is going to be in Pisces until 2026. So during the three years between the time when Saturn enters into Pisces and the time when it reaches the position of Pisces toward the end of that sign, uh, position of Neptune, sorry, 
toward the end of that sign, Pisces, then perhaps, hopefully, what we have done during the transit of Saturn in Capricorn for about two or three years, because as I said earlier, Saturn is in Capricorn since December 21, 2017. So whatever we do to really uh, make things happen for ourselves according to our dreams, as I said earlier, and according to that connection that we have with, the, with our spiritual self, which is very important, of course, that's a connection with our soul, uh, through our mind, which is going to motivate us, us to uh, work harder and harder in order to reach and attain our goals. And that may be possible in 2025, perhaps, for this, or to know exactly when Saturn and Neptune uh, get together and form what we call a conjunction. Uh, we'll have to uh, check the, uh, uh, the book uh, in which all the positions of the planets are listed, which we call ephemerides. So if you have that book, uh, don't hesitate, or perhaps you can visit a website uh, that will um, give you the, um, uh, the ephemerides, or ephemerides, uh, we say ephemeride in French, I don't know how we say it exactly in English, but I think it's ephemerides or something like that, or ephemerides perhaps. I'm not sure. Anyway, you know what I mean. So, 2019 is of course an important year. As far as what we can do and continue on doing, because some of us would have been working on that realization of a project or maybe uh, of a dream, as I said earlier, um, we will continue on working until the end of 2020. But that doesn't mean that after that we're going to stop, of course. No, uh, because Saturn will enter into Aquarius, which is a sign that precedes Pisces. And then things are going to be even more pressing and important to us because we'll be uh, getting closer to the results that we are aiming at, of course, um, more for certain than others, of course. So there is another planet here in Capricorn, and that planet is Pluto. Pluto has been in Capricorn since 2008. Then it retrograded into Sagittarius and came back uh, in Capricorn in 2009, early in 2009. And so it's been in Capricorn for quite a long time, 10 years. And it will remain in Capricorn until 2024. 2024, 2025. Pluto is a very, very slow planet. It takes 248 years to circle around the uh, zodiac. Pluto represents death. Symbolically, symbolically it means um, stopping something or losing something or um, getting to the end of something or someone, a relationship, could be a relationship, could be the loss of a person that we love, um, a member of family, for example, or so someone else, death. But death, um, in a, the really death, like someone dies, but death can be also uh, symbolically. So Pluto represents what we have to accept to lose or accept to abandon. Um, and if we are mourning about someone that we lost or 
something that we lost it could be a job for example you got kicked out of your uh, of your job by your employer who, who didn't understand what you uh, were doing or didn't agree with what you were doing or you didn't agree with what he was doing or whatever uh, the fact is that you uh, are feeling very dark about what happened and the things that may have happened may have happened since 2008 so it's a long time and it's a long time to be mourning and to be grieving perhaps or um, to be feeling bad or angry about what happened uh, many years ago when Saturn reaches Pluto that will be see Pluto uh, on the 1st of January will be at 20 degrees and 36 minutes in Capricorn uh, Saturn on the 1st of January will only be at 11 degrees and 23 minutes in Capricorn so uh, almost 10 degrees will still be separating both planets but Saturn is much faster in moving forward and it will move forward to uh, almost to the position of Pluto uh, which it will reach almost on the 30th of April you see here Saturn at 20 degrees and 31 minutes in uh, Capricorn on the 30th of April and on the 1st of May Pluto will be at 23 degrees and 9 minutes in Capricorn so only uh, two and a half degrees or a bit more will separate both planets which can be considered as a conjunction but not quite completely a conjunction not quite exactly a conjunction and both planets are going to retrograde on the 1st of May for Pluto and on the 30th of, so the 30th of April for Saturn but they will come back together and later in the year the conjunction will be effective and it will also be effective in 2020 that's interesting because Saturn represents what we are able to realize concretely so maybe that transit of Saturn at the uh, conjunction of Pluto will help us get things organized or accept what we have lost or who we have lost as being part of our life part of our progress in life um, and necessary for us to progress as well so uh, I believe that the, the conjunction between Saturn and Pluto will help us also with Neptune here uh, as I said earlier Neptune represents the connection that we have with uh, the spiritual uh, dimension of life um, and the fact that we are connected to that uh, dimension uh, linked to Pluto and Saturn will most probably help us get things uh, behind us and not l instead of living in the past we will leave the past where it is and as we cannot change the past we will uh, organize ourselves to uh, move forward into the uh, future and that future will be met when Saturn reaches the position of Neptune as I said earlier around 2025 or 24 perhaps we we'll have to check about that in that famous book called the ephemerides or ephemerides um, another planet is interesting as well transit wise it is Uranus Uranus is uh, has entered into Taurus on the 15th of May 2018 but it was a timid entry uh, because Uranus has moved up to the third degree in Taurus and then began a uh, retrograde motion and now uh, Uranus is almost today almost back in 
Aries. But it will be back in Aries on the 8th of November this year, so in one month, according to today. Today is the 9th of October. It will come back in Taurus, of course. As we can see here, on the 1st of January 2019, Uranus will be at 28 degrees 37 minutes in Aries. And it will start moving forward again, because then it will be in a, still in a retrograde motion. It will start moving forward again on the 7th of January. And it will then be at 28 degrees and 36 minutes in Aries. It will reach Taurus and enter again into Taurus on the night of the f uh, between the 5 and 6 of March uh, 2019. And then it will remain in that sign even though it will retrograde again and move forward again. Uh, it will remain in that sign for about seven years. The fact that Uranus enters into Taurus is very important. Uh, and probably most important for Taurus people, of course, especially those born uh, early in, in Taurus, um, so late in April, for example. Um, but it will also be very important and interesting for all of us. Uranus represents changes, radical changes, drastic changes, and very often irreversible changes. Now, because it enters into Taurus, it enters into a Earth sign. An Earth sign just like Capricorn. And because it is in an Earth sign just like Capricorn, it will be creating a positive link with, uh, with Saturn and Pluto. But it will also be creating a positive link with Neptune. Even though with Neptune it will not be a sextile because Neptune is, uh, has moved forward to, uh, by then, uh, Neptune will have moved forward at about almost 18 degrees in Pisces. But this sign and this sign are compatible signs. And this sign and this sign are compatible signs as well as those earth signs. Signs that, are, that belong to the, mem the same elements are compatible. So this is compatible with Taurus, Capricorn is compatible with Taurus, and Taurus is compatible with Virgo, and Virgo is compatible with Capricorn, of course. So we get here, of course, a, tri a triangle, and that triangle is beneficial to uh, more especially perhaps to people born under the sign Taurus, Capricorn and Virgo. But also Pisces and most probably also why not um, Cancer although it is a bit different for Cancer and Scorpio because there will be an opposition with Scorpio although Scorpio will benefit from Saturn and Pluto and Neptune and by and Cancer as well, although Cancer will be opposite Saturn and Pluto. So it's a bit different for the signs and I will explain in detail what may happen to this, those particular signs in videos that I'm going to, uh, to make for each of the uh, zodiac signs after I, I completed this one. When it is completed I will uh, probably uh, start uh, uh, filming the uh, videos for Aries, then Taurus and so on until uh, Pisces for 2019 and then you can watch those videos to, uh, um, to find out if you are interested uh, to find out what may happen uh, due to uh, the various transits that are going to uh, uh, occur around the zodiac. So what else? These are the slow planets, right? Saturn takes 29 years to go around the zodiac. Uranus takes 84 years. For Neptune, we have to wait 
and 165 years until uh, it comes back to the same point in the, around the zodiac and Pluto, well, 248 years. So that's what we call the slow planets. And the slow planets, because they remain, of course, at the same, in the same sign and, in, um, and around the same degrees in that sign. For Pluto, for example, uh, the movement of Pluto in one year is about one to two degrees uh, forward. So it's very, very slow. There is another planet that is very important as well. It's Jupiter. Now Jupiter will enter into uh, Sagittarius on the 8th of November uh, this year, 2018. And it will re remain in Sagittarius until uh, December, uh, 3rd of December, 2019. So they will remain in Sagittarius for over one year, almost 13 months. It's important because Sagittarius will be transiting its own sign, just like Saturn, just like Neptune. So in Sagittarius, naturally, Jupiter will be stronger. Its influence is already very strong. It's a very, very big planet. It is about 1,300 times the uh, volume of the Earth. Um, it is a planet that has a very, very strong magnetic field, uh, radiation and so on. So we uh, consider in astrology that Jupiter represents evolution, progress, uh, growth. So in Sagittarius, of course, it's going to uh, be very, very impressive as far as uh, the need to grow, the need to succeed, the need to progress is concerned or are concerned. Now, Jupiter, of course, in Sagittarius, will be transiting a fire sign. Fire, fire for Aries, fire for Leo. Three fire signs. The three fire signs will probably be um, well supported by Jupiter, will benefit from the influence of Jupiter as far as success, growth, progress are concerned. But Jupiter in Sagittarius will create a square aspect with uh, Neptune in Pisces. Here we have a fire sign, here we have a water sign. Try to mix water and fire. Not very easy, isn't it? So if it's not easy, it means that that transit for people born under the sign Pisces and perhaps also Sagittarius. Even though Sagittarians may feel very motivated and perhaps um, opportunities to uh, succeed in their area of life, whatever it is, um, are strong. The opportunities are coming strongly and in, in, in various ways. They will have to be careful because Neptune may create a tendency to believe too much in their dreams and uh, perhaps also uh, they will be influenced by their own desire to succeed. But all this I will discuss in the video concerning this sign Sagittarius. So you may be interested to watch it if you belong to that sign of course or if you know someone who uh, was born under that sign. Uh, so, for us all, and not including those people born under the sign Pisces or and Sagittarius, for us all, the what we call the uh, difficult aspect between Jupiter and Neptune 
may create a tendency to uh, excessive um, enthusiasm and uh, positivity. It's good to be positive about things in life. It's good to go forward and to engage ourselves into what we want to do with a lot of uh, uh, trust and, and uh, confidence in ourselves and in other people if other people are involved in our activities or project. Of course it is good, but we have to keep you know, within the limits. If we believe too much or if we um, if we, how would I say, uh, if we do things or if we create in ourselves um, a uh, situation that seems to be ideal and perfect for us, we might be fooling ourselves in order to keep that motivation high enough to continue on moving forward, but we may be moving forward to a Neptune, which is like a, a mirage, maybe something that is not real, maybe something that we'll not be able to reach because it's much too high, much too far, much too difficult to reach. So whatever you, we want to do, you and myself, huh, everyone, Everyone will be affected by this uh, configuration in different ways according to everyone's chart, of course, uh, because we all have something in Sagittarius and in Pisces, as I said earlier. So have a look at your chart and if you want to know a bit more about this configuration because you have a project and you maybe have the intuition that this project can be something very big, but at the same time you are taking risks and although you are very motivated and very enthusiastic about the project, you may feel perhaps something is not quite right. And that's intuition. Intuition is represented by Neptune. So um, be careful. And if you want to know more about this configuration and the effect of Jupiter in your chart, uh, according to the uh, effect of Neptune, of course, uh, then uh, contact me, uh, uh, ask me a question uh, by visiting the website. You will find all the links to uh, ask uh, questions and I will answer your question within uh, a few days uh, by email, of course. Um, what else? We can talk about Mars. Mars is a planet that takes, uh, for Jupiter, I didn't mention, but Jupiter takes about 12 years to go around the zodiac. So for Mars, it's only two years. So it's what, it's what we call a, a fast planet. Um, Mars will serve as a detonator, you know? something that makes the uh, makes things happen. Uh, so we have a slow planet, for example we have Jupiter, which is considered a slow planet because it remains about one year in, in one sign. Um, so it is there and it's, it's creating an atmosphere. Um, it's not actually perhaps a planet that will a planet that will create or that will um, motivate an event when Mars reaches uh, Jupiter then things change because things may happen Mars is the planet that makes things happen good or not so good of course so when Mars transits into Sagittarius We'll have to be careful, of course, in the next year because that mass will enhance that configuration with Neptune that I've explained earlier. Now, when will Mars transit into Sagittarius? In 2019, 
Well, it will not. Which is lucky. It's lucky for people born under that sign, Sagittarius, and people born under the sign Pisces, of course. Mars, in one year, can transit about six signs, because in two years it does the twelve signs. So, uh, Mars, on the 1st of January, will enter into Aries. So it will be here in Aries. And, of course, in January, Jupiter will be here in Sagittarius. Therefore, there will be a positive link between Mars and Jupiter in Sagittarius. And that positive link will serve, of course, will serve Sagittarius and Leos, as well as Aries, um, will serve them if they act. But when Mars transits into Aries, we all, and it's not depending on someone's signs, on our sign or ascendant or whatever, it's depending on our chart, but we're all affected by everything that happens around the zodiac. We are in the center of the zodiac, here. The earth is here, right? So the earth gets all the information from the influences of the planets around the zodiac. So during that transit of Mars in uh, Aries, which will last until the 15th of February, so for six weeks, from the 1st of January until the 15th of February, we'll all be more active, combative, and um, reactive as well. And activity, uh, of course, is the uh, keyword to success or keyword to problems, depending on what sort of activity and what sort of reactions that we have. So, as long as Mars is in um, positive configuration with Jupiter, it is going to help us move forward. It will make us more generous, more open-minded, more enthusiastic, more active, more positive, and perhaps more efficient as well in the areas that we will need to uh, uh, in which we will need to, to work on to, or to act or react, perhaps. And that will be, of course, much more remarkable in the lives of Aries, Sagittarius or Leo. If you're born under the sign Aries with a rising sign in Sagittarius or Leo, well, it will be much stronger for you, of course. The same if you were born under the sign Sagittarius with a rising sign in Aries or in Leo, naturally. And the same if you were born under the sign Leo with a rising sign Sagittarius and Aries. You understand what I mean? But all that we'll talk about when I explain things more in detail for each sign of the zodiac in separate videos. Uh, when Mars enters into Taurus. That will be on the 15th of February and the transit will last for about six weeks or so until the 1st of April. For that time it will be in Taurus in the Earth sign. It will be not in conjunction with Uranus. The conjunction with Uranus will occur at the end of the transit of Mars in Aries because in January and February, Uranus will be in Aries, not in Taurus. As we saw earlier, Uranus will enter into Taurus on the 6th of March, and not, of course, in January nor February. Um, so, when in February um, uh, Mars enters into Taurus, uh, it will have already connected with Uranus and that may help people born under this sign Aries or people born under this sign Sagittarius or Leo to do something that's going to change drastically their lives in a good way. Um, 
And for ourselves, whatever our sign is, um, it will be the same more or less, but in a perhaps in a different way, not so direct way. Although uh, whatever you have in such in uh, in Aries, uh, a house or a planet or whatever, uh, will of course receive the influence of that conjunction Mars Uranus uh, at the end of uh, the transit of Mars here. So during the uh, second week of um, February. But when it does enter into Taurus, which will be on the 15th of February, until the 1st of April, as we see, as we said earlier, Uranus will enter into Taurus as well, a bit later, on the 6th of March. And of course, as soon as Uranus enters into Taurus, it will send a message to Mars saying, I'm here. So because I'm here, you are going to ch have to change, to change the way you act or react in order to be more effective, more efficient. And the changes will, of course, be beneficial to those people born under the sign Capricorn, Pisces, and Virgo, because there will be uh, those beneficial aspects with the signs. Beneficial also to people born under the sign Cancer, under the sign Scorpio, it's a bit not as uh, easy for them, but I'll talk about that later on in a separate video. Then Mars will enter into Gemini, and that will be on the 1st of April until the 17th of May. In Gemini, it will enhance our need to communicate, but perhaps also to argue and to get into trouble, of course, to get into conflict with other people. Uh, because in that sign, Mars will create an opposition with Jupiter and a square aspect with uh, Neptune. And that will tend to make us too eager to uh, move forward. As I said earlier, we have to be careful about the way we move forward to reach our goals or to realize our dreams and be also careful not to be influenced by other people who may uh, only want to take advantage of our good nature or, or our uh, of our uh, poten potential uh, or money perhaps. Hmm? So during that period of time, six weeks during which we'll have to really apply uh, the brake instead of the accelerator. The accelerator is represented by Mars. The brake is represented by Saturn. And in a car, you know that we need both pedals to uh, conduct our vehicle the, in, a, in a proper manner. But between Gemini and Capricorn, there is what we call an inconjunct aspect. And it's not such an easy aspect to, uh, to control. So Mars, the accelerator, and Saturn, the uh, brake, will need to be adjusted very, very subtly in order to uh, make us as efficient as possible as instead of excessive as possible because the excessive part of our nature is represented by Jupiter and they are our dream part the uh, the tendency to dream the tendency to to hope for things that are not reachable or not realizable uh, that's represented by Neptune but when Mars transits into Cancer, it will become much different. Much different because Cancer is uh, compatible with Pisces, sorry. Um, it is compatible with Scorpio, but at the moment there is nothing much in Scorpio. And it is compatible with Taurus as well. It is compatible with Capricorn. 
because in opposition uh, is an aspect that concerns two signs that are compatible yes the elements water and earth water and earth sextile water and earth opposition so an opposition somehow is a positive aspect in my view actually because there is a complementarity between those two signs there is a bit of Capricorn in Cancer people and a bit of Cancer in Capricorn people but when Mars transits into Cancer it's going to activate the energy of Saturn and Pluto and perhaps make us too eager to f finish something uh, a work or uh, to end a story or a relationship or whatever it can be and perhaps in a in a way that we are going afterwards to regret because we will have perhaps been too uh, too um, eager too aggressive uh, too much in a hurry to get things done and maybe if we do that we will regret it later on because mistakes can be made when we go too fast in a, instead of applying the brake the brake the accelerator those two pedals may feel very difficult to control during that period of time but of course if we rely on our intuition represented by Neptune then we will be able to know without explanations what we need to do or not to do in order to avoid problems otherwise we will must probably have problems because there will be an conjunct with Jupiter in Sagittarius here we have a fire sign here we have a water sign water and, and fire don't mix together very easily do they then Mars will enter into uh, Leo that will be on the 1st of July and it will end on the 19th, 19th of uh, uh, August in Leo it will create a beneficial aspect with Jupiter it will also create um, an inconjunct with Neptune, Saturn and Pluto and a square with Uranus so let's be careful during that period of time let's not be too egotistical um, too proud and uh, perhaps too eager to succeed for ourselves instead of perhaps including other people with us as well and thinking about other people otherwise we will be um, favored by Jupiter so things will probably seem to be very positive and moving forward very positively as well and that's going to make us more motivated and probably more enthusiastic and optimistic which is good but because of that in conjunct with Saturn and Pluto because of the in conjunct with Neptune and the square with Uranus what happens then may somehow turn against us success can turn against you and if we're not, not prepared uh, for success then it can be very difficult to handle uh, so again Saturn the brake Mars the accelerator the accelerator will be the pedal on which we will most probably feel like we need to press more than the brake pedal but if we do so Pluto is here next to Saturn and that can mean an accident or a, a bad incident 
and some things that something again that we may regret to have believed in or that we may regret to have done to have moved forward so fast so quick so um, selfishly also then Mars will transit into Virgo from 19th of, from the 19th of August until the 5th of October in Virgo it will create a beneficial aspect with Taurus and Capricorn Earth 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 um, and that will all of course be very interesting for Virgo people Taurus and Capricorn um, but for us all it will make us much more efficient in dealing with those famous two pedals the brake and the accelerator the accelerator here the brake here and because there is a, a positive link between both we'll be much more efficient and because Virgo represents also <coughs> our um, realistic um, mind our capacity ability to uh, uh, to, this, to, to do things in a very uh, serious manner work-wise or whatever health-wise as well and <coughs> mass transiting into into Virgo will definitely help us change what we want to change in a very uh, concrete manner even though it may imply to get rid of other things in order to move forward and to uh, make our um, life vehicle as I call it uh, existential vehicle lighter so easier to uh, to move forward but there will be an opposition with Neptune and a square with Jupiter that means that we'll still be have to be careful not to be too enthusiastic and not to function too much according to what we believe what we hope for uh, what we dream about again we'll have to uh, be careful of our tendency to dream in 2019 and that's only because Jupiter is there in Sagittarius then Mars will move into uh, Libra on the 5th of October until the 20th of November Mars will be in Libra and in Libra it will be in beneficial aspect with Jupiter so that's all right but it will create a square with Mars and Pluto uh, Saturn and Pluto and it will create an inconjunct with Neptune and another one with Uranus so even though we may be more diplomatic when Mars transits into Libra we'll still have probably need to use the uh, brake pedal uh, much more in order to avoid problems the brake pedal is here and the accelerator is here and there is a conflicting relationship between uh, Libra and Capricorn according to the elements air and earth try to mix air and earth what do you get earth because the air is invisible so there is not a compatible it is not a too compatible uh, or complementary elements even though of course the air and the earth and the f and fire and water um, cohabit in uh, on the planet naturally um, but the tendency to uh, accelerate will create a tendency to block so that's because if we not if we are not using both pedals properly in the car just imagine you press on both pedals at the same time on the brake and the accelerator what's going to happen try and you let me know after that um, so the uh, advice here is to be careful of course about the way we are going to handle things uh, and also the way we um, act according to what we believe and what we want to change in life because we will be wanting to change things 
according to our dreams and pretensions and so on and hopes and whatever uh, but here Saturn and Pluto represents what we may have to uh, part with to accept to lose in order to move forward and that may be a bit difficult for certain people uh, but it will certainly be enhanced in uh, in terms of motivation and positive motivation by Jupiter which can also represent the help of exterior help coming from other people coming from wherever uh, maybe coming from heaven to help us move forward and 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 be more uh, efficient but to really benefit from the influence of Jupiter we'll need to look at those planets and what they represent in our chart uh, to be able to uh, uh, control things in the uh, best possible way so if you want to have more information about that of course once again visit my website and uh, uh, click on uh, one of the uh, uh, um, buttons to uh, reach the uh, service page and on the services page you can ask me a question about uh, your situation whatever it is at the time and perhaps uh, get an answer that will help you get the best out of that situation or maybe avoid also a problem hmm. then to end the year Mars will transit into Scorpio here Scorpio is a sign that is uh, positively relating to Capricorn positively relating to Pisces and somehow positively relating to Taurus as well Earth sign, Water sign compatibility between the two but Uranus here is the planet that makes us change that makes us want to change need to change and that need to change will be very strong at the end of that year and actually during that transit of Mars in Scorpio Jupiter is going to move into Capricorn on the 3rd of December as I said earlier as soon as Jupiter moves into Capricorn Mars will be in a beneficial aspect with it and it also will be in beneficial aspect with Saturn and Pluto so evolution is going to be much more evident and probably uh, the motivation that will have shown all through the year 2019 and being careful of not uh, overdoing it uh, as I said earlier Jupiter and Neptune will have to be watched because they can make us more eager too eager to reach our goals to realize our dreams or whatever and maybe uh, that will be for certain people uh, a source of uh, problem and perhaps uh, um, instead of succeeding uh, uh, they will uh, probably uh, need to uh, start again in 2020 uh, a year during which they'll probably have another chance to uh, move forward and be more efficient to reach their goals this video is finished thank you very much for your attention and if you need me don't forget to visit my website uh, where you will find all the information necessary to ask me a question or perhaps to order a complete uh, forecast for 2019 don't hesitate thank you very much Thank you.